I love geometry, and I also have always tried to not just communicate with it, but to get feeling into it, to get emotion into it, to get that. It's like writing poetry. You, can, you get to that point where you can't change anything, and if you do change something, you notice it, and it usually screws up the whole thing. They had a show on Op Art in New York, and I loved it because it was, it was just an experimentation of uh, how do you make energy, how do you make movement happen on a flat surface in most cases, and it was just a beautiful experience. And it was timely for me because at that time I had an opportunity to go to uh, Mexico. And of course at that point, this is 66 now, the end of 66, and uh, of course no computers, so I still keep all of my compasses and everything. But um, that was the geometry that allowed the year of the event, the 68, to integrate with the five rings. And then from that, I was able to develop the, uh, the logotype Mexico 68. And then um, from that, and then thank you, Bridget Riley and all the people at the show at MoMA, uh, we got as much energy out of, out of this program visually as we could. And um, I used it in many, 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 many ways. I mean, this is a postage stamp. Uh, we used it as murals, and we used the pattern um, on dresses. You didn't need the Mexico 68 to know that it was part of the Olympics. The other part of the program that was really important was the um, identifying the different sporting events. Now in Tokyo, they did stick figures, and in Munich, after the Mexico games, they used stick figures again. We didn't use stick figures. We focused on a, uh, a piece of equipment or a part of the body and did what you normally see as far as the image in the, uh, the glyph systems, uh, Mayan and earlier cultures in Mexico. When water was involved, uh, that became part of the icon or symbol. Now this is interesting, and <laughs> <laughs> this, without knowing it, I, I had launched myself into a career of icons that uh, you know, and I had to do a lot of arguing as far as using icons for anything except for the Olympics because people said, well, icons are for illiterate people. And I knew after this experience that icons just communicated certain things really, really well. Well, now we all know it. We're all sick of them, but uh, there, there they are. You said that when you designed the icons for the various stations, you designed them in such a way that they could be rendered as language. So people would, people would remember the symbol of a duck or a pyramid, but they could also say, they could also refer to the station as the duck station or the pyramid station. Yeah. You know, it's a process of continually learning uh, when you're dealing with iconography because it's not just icons you're talking about. It's a strategy. Uh, it's a contextual thing. I mean, you get out in the street, and uh, especially in Mexico City, when these things work in the street, I'm very happy because it, it, it is a very uh, chaotic visual environment. I love it, but uh, you know, there are certain things you want to be able to spot, like a, a metro station, things like that. I had other uh, devices. I call them um, you know, basic elements of the program. Uh, and I think of these elements as, they're like helpers, like you're designing a helper. They kind of help you communicate things. And this was going back to the early Greek games and the silhouette. And I developed a series of, uh, first it was postage stamps. And there was a reason uh, for this because at that point they didn't have a four color press. They didn't have um, registration on the stamp. So by simply dropping out the Mexico 68, and overprinting with black, I was able to uh, get a, a good, you know, series of stamps for the 19 sporting events. And by designing a stamp that when you place it next to itself, the motion carries through, um, that was a very helpful aspect of it. And the stamps themselves became a very, a very, you know, vivid uh, expression of the overall program. <laughs> 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 This 
this, I, 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 I'm a little embarrassed showing this. I'm not, I'm not accusing them of, but you know, I was driving down the West Side Highway in a cab. My wife and I were driving down the West Side Highway. It was 2004, and they had all the billboards out for the iPod. And I, I saw a billboard, and I thought, why are my stamps up there? You know, I mean, it was, like a, it was so weird. It was really weird. So I, I had to do this. I'm sorry, Apple. <laughs> Do you believe that simplicity is always more effective than the complex? Simplicity versus complexity. Well, I'll leave you with a uh, quote from Einstein. It's one of my favorite quotes. He said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. It's the not simpler part that's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs>